NFL Sunday Ticket is now on YouTube and YouTube TV, which means that it just got easier to be an NFL fan, even if you live far away. Like, maybe you like the Bears, but you're hibernating in Panthers territory. But with NFL Sunday Ticket, your out-of-market team is never more than a short distance away, specifically the distance from you to your remote control. NFL Sunday Ticket, now on YouTube and YouTube TV. Go to youtube.com slash presale to get $50 off. Terms and embargoes apply. Offer ends 919. No refund. Subscription auto renews. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Hello, baseball fans. I'm Lark Smith, and he is... Stan Huff. And welcome to another visit to the mound. Our guest today is former pitcher and front office executive Bob Gephardt, who had a 55-year career in Major League Baseball. His days as a player were spent with the Twins and Expos organizations, but his claim to fame came as the very first general manager for the Colorado Rockies. Bob, thanks for joining us today for a visit to the mound. All right. Nice to be with you. First thing I want to ask you about is the challenge you experienced in putting together a Major League Baseball team as the first general manager of an expansion franchise. Well, the old saying 24-7, that's exactly what it was. Uh, I was with the Twins in the 91 World Series, and I accepted the job uh, to be the first general manager of Colorado, but I got to stay with the Twins to the the World Series, and and, – we had the parade in downtown Minneapolis. And the next morning, I was on a plane to Denver. And I I tell this story. Uh, somebody picked me up at the airport. And I walked into our temporary downtown offices in uh, Denver and up to my temporary desk. And there were two paper clips laying on the desk. And I had a whole briefcase full of notes. And I said to myself, what the hell have I just done? I just left a well <laughs> <laughs> well-oiled machine, and, and here we come in, and we don't have balls or bats or uniforms or a schedule or minor league teams, and we didn't have any players. So it it, it literally was a 24-7 uh, a job, and, and uh, it, it, it was a challenge because us in the Florida Marlins, uh, the Rockies and the Marlins, both uh, were the two expansion clubs, and right. the, ground, the ground rules were laid out for us. Uh, on how this is going to go about, but uh, it, it was trying to trying to hire a staff, a major league manager, coaches, uh, trying to find minor league cities for our, our kids to play it uh, was was full time. And, and I, uh, after a lot of interviews, uh, I hired Don Baylor to be the first manager, and and then we put together a staff. And anyway, all this was a, an experience and. Uh, a lot of the stuff, the media were following us very closely to find out what we were trying to do and where I was going. And so it was a little hide and seek and a lot of, uh, a lot of phone calls. Well, I bet so. Do you, were you traveling a lot as well to go to these minor yeah. cities to, to find out that stuff? Yeah. And, and when, you know, when we started, the, the ground rules were, uh, we take part of the expansion draft. And uh, then we take part in the, also the amateur draft. So the first year we had a major league team, a triple-A team, and two rookie clubs. Then the following year we added uh, class A clubs. And the last thing uh, we were allowed to do is put our double-A team together. And it was set up this way, you guys, because that way you had a place for everybody to play at. And hopefully they got better to move up a level each year. Right. So uh, – we uh, we went through that process and uh, uh, it just it worked out. Everybody in the world, uh, including Peter Gammon, thought we'd lose 110 games. <laughs> we never did. We lost, I think the first year we lost 95, which was a, uh, a accomplishment we all shot for. I see. Let me ask you a question on the uh, minor league side. Did y'all buy the franchises or, or work a player de- player to de- player development agreement? <laughs> No, the the minor league teams uh, were were in uh, in operation. We had uh, one club up at uh, Bend, Oregon, uh, that uh, was an independent club, and, and we went up there. We reached an agreement with them, but uh, no, the the other clubs were in existence. They just I 
had to shuffle some some teams around. Right, I understand. You bet. You mentioned that the Florida Marlins also were added that same year. What was your approach when it came to the expansion draft? Well, I I had had a little experience uh, when I worked for Montreal. We had a Triple A team in Denver, so I was well aware of the fact that the ball carries so farther up here, up here at uh, mile high. Uh, so we really concentrated heavy on pitching because I knew we'd be able to uh, sign free agent hitters, but pitchers aren't going to want to come here. So we <laughs> it would need our first selection. Uh, we we really were bearing down on the pitching. Yeah, that ball flies like a golf ball up there. <laughs> I can imagine pitchers don't want to spit, don't want to pitch there now. Yeah, no, that's exactly you're exactly right. And uh, if, you, if you if you did get a pitcher to come here, I signed that uh, Joe Kyle was a free agent, and, and uh, we had to pay him a lot of money, but he he did come here and, and it was here for a while before they traded him off after I left. That expansion draft, how much did that play into the fact that both you and the Marlins were in the postseason fairly quick, like within the first five years of the franchise? Yeah, in fact, we set a record that uh, we played our first game, uh, National League game in 1993. and 1995, we were in the playoffs, the fastest in the expansion club had ever, ever been there. Uh, we were the wild card, and, and shortly thereafter, uh, Florida won the World Series, so yeah, both clubs uh, had different ways to approach it. Uh, they had pretty much an unlimited budget, and, uh, and I didn't have an lim- uh, unlimited budget. I had uh, $8 million to start our first year in 93, Wow! and that was not just a 25-man roster. It was a 40-man roster. So we, uh, we had to watch where we spent our dollars. Well, I understand that. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so after uh, – after you were at uh, with the Colorado team, then you went over to the Cardinals and then the Diamondbacks and then back to the Cardinals. Tell us a little bit about right. that. Well, uh, I took the job in 91. I was there until, I think, September of 99. And, and both myself and, and the owner decided that maybe we should, should uh, break this relationship. So I resigned. Uh, one day and two days later, I went to work for the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, the general manager there, Walt Jockerty, had worked for me in Colorado, and then went to St. Louis, and he hired me. So I was there for five years, and then uh, as a as a vice president, then I had the opportunity uh, to get a bigger promotion and go to the Arizona Diamondbacks, which I did for. And then it was time to get out of the desert and, and uh, <laughs> went back uh, went back to St. Louis. I see. And I, reti- I retired from St. Louis. As a general manager, not only do you have to assemble the product on the field, but aren't you also overseeing everything from field maintenance to fan experience to concessions? Well, I skipped the concessions. I didn't have to mess with that. <laughs> That's but, good. You know, I tried to. Uh, I tried to make myself available for anybody that uh, I do it many times. I go down before uh, mid afternoon before a game and they'd have a, a little meeting with all the uh, ushers. I'd sit down and listen to them, and and uh, I think they appreciated it, and I enjoyed hearing what they were saying. So I tried to be involved in as many things as we can. Uh, during, uh, during my tenure here, we started. Uh, our Field of Dreams program, where I got some of the well, the, the better paid uh, major league players to contribute some money, and we in turn had uh, the Robert R. McCormick Foundation that I think they matched fifty cents on the dollar, and we built uh, fifty-eight, either built or renovated fifty-eight ballparks in uh, the Denver area, uh, in the Wyoming. Nice. Uh, which was really nice. We took old beat up fields and, and uh, Sean McGraw, a young man that worked for us, did a great job of, of getting uh, getting the fields laid out and, and really some nice ballparks for the kids to play in. Outstanding. That's, that is good. So uh, let me let me back up here. Your time in uh, Minnesota as uh, uh, minor league director over there. 
And, uh, well, you had a couple guys that went to the big leagues that I had actually caught with Jeff Reardon and Juan Baron Gare. And also, I worked with Wayne Terwilliger. And they, all, mm-hmm. three, all three of those guys were on that 91, I believe, the 1991 team that won the World Series. That's, that's correct. Yes. Boy, and that, it was. It was go, that's, ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead, Bob. Well, when, uh, when uh, Minnesota had to make a change in their front office, uh, and they had, in this fall of 1986, uh, Andy McPhail, uh, a young man, uh, they brought him to be the general manager, and I came in to be uh, uh, vice president of player personnel for them. I see, and that's yes. when Tom Kelly, uh, Tom Kelly became the manager. Uh, so we we were there, and I was there for that's five years and, and two World Series, and then I got the opportunity to go to Colorado and be the general manager. That's, that's, really, that's really exciting to go through a World Series like that, two of them, and, uh, and be the winner. That's, uh, that's, that's a special, special yeah, part of really the Yeah, it really was. Our guest today is Bob Gebhardt, former general manager in Major League Baseball. Bob, is there a player, coach, or maybe fellow executive that you consider the most interesting character you encountered during your days in baseball? Or we have till Christmas. <laughs> you, you mean it was not Stan Huff? <laughs> well, he's 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 selling uh, he's selling bets now. Yeah, serving, serving team soup. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> anyway, well, listen, Bob. I tell you what, we've uh, we've enjoyed the visit today. I know you got to get going, get to that dental appointment. So uh, once again, thanks for stopping in, and, and we do appreciate it very much. All right, John. Have a good day. You bet. We'll see you later. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. That's our time for this episode of A Visit to the Mound. Thanks to our special guest today, Bob Gabhart, and thanks to you for listening. If you have any questions or comments or anything you would like for us to cover, we would love to hear from you. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Visit to the Mound or on our website at visittothemound.com. Make sure you like, subscribe, and review this podcast and be listening the next time we make A Visit to the Mound. That'll wrap up this Visit to the Mound. We certainly appreciate you joining us today for a little baseball talk. Anytime you want to hear something about baseball, you can find us anywhere you get your podcast. Or you can go to roguemedianetwork.com for the next edition of A Visit to the Mound. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.